We're going to continue with the study in Romans. We're in Romans chapter 4. We'll be looking at verses 9 through 12. And uh, uh, before we get started, I'd like to pray. So, Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to come, gather, and, and study your word. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would lead us, guide us, and direct us through your word. Father, may we uh, hear your word. May we submit to your word. May we live lives that would uh, reflect the love and the, the grace that you have bestowed on us, Lord. Father, as we hear your word, study your word, and struggle with understanding it, Lord, Father, we ask your Holy Spirit to make it clear for us and help us to, um, to um, accept the truth that is your word. May it glorify you and may it sanctify us in, in, um, in our learning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, like I said, we'll be in Romans 4, 9 through 12. And um, uh, this, this section, this, this chapter, it, it's key. Um, it's so important. Um, but before we get started, I'd like to recap a little bit, kind of get a little background, get us back to what we're looking at. In chapters 1 and 2, you know, Paul gives his introduction. You know, he, he um, lets us know that he's an apostle. He speaks with authority. He, he brings a message from uh, from Christ. And this message that he's bringing in these first two chapters, it's, it's condemnation. It's, it's um, talking about the, the condition of the Gentile, the condition of the Jew. And it's a, a very tough uh, two chapters. Nobody gets out of there unscathed because you have the Jews and you have the Gentiles and he goes and, and calls it like it is. Talks about all, everyone's um, condition and everyone's uh, under the righteous wrath of God, meaning that we deserve the, um, the punishment that God, um, that God gives to us because of our condition. Um, in, uh, in Romans 4, um, I'm, I'm sorry, in Romans 1.1, 1, 1, you know, Paul says he's a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. You know, again, stating his introduction of, of who he is and what, what he's um, about. So in, in 1.16, um, he says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and all to the, also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed for, from faith, for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Again, Paul is talking about a bunch of key um, uh, doctrinal points, some, some key elements and it's important in, in, um, in this letter to the, to the Roman church, to the Christians in, in church, that um, it's important for their growth. And e even today, it's important and it's relevant to, to our lives today. So as we, as we um, go through this study, it's important for us to look at how it applies to our life and what it means to us uh, in our understanding of, of the gospel message. Uh, and one more verse in, in chapter 1, 118. Again, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. And, and like I said, so Paul is, is letting people know that we are under judgment, that, we, that no one is righteous. He makes that case clear. And then we get to chapters 3 through 5 where the provision of God, you know, justification, a big word meaning that we're made right before God that we are justified. And so for this, this punishment that we deserve, uh, God has provided justification where we can stand before God um, justified, made right, made uh, um, um, redeemed. So uh, in chapter 4, Paul discusses some key uh, foundational doctrines in this letter to the Christians in Rome. These issues that Paul addresses, you know, like I said, they're, they're very relevant, they're very important, and uh, understanding these basics of justification uh, that God provides will give us a solid foundation for the rest of Paul's letter. So he's, he's building a case. He's already made the, made the case and stated the fact that we are all, nobody deserves um, forgiveness. We, we deserve the punishment that we we get. In doing that, he comes to chapter 4, 
and talking about these doctrines of justification, where he's explaining how someone could be saved. And um, in this chapter, in chapter 4, you have... Um, uh, Paul makes several points. He, talk, he says clearly that there's no salvation by works. In, um, there's no salvation by ritual, which is what we'll be talking about today. Last week was the works. Today we're talking about the ritual. And then um, he says that there's um, no salvation by the law. And then ultimately at the end of the chapter, he talks about that salvation is by faith. And we'll see that through this in this study today. But in, this, in today's um, lesson, like I said last week, uh, one through eight, was there is no salvation through works. Paul uses uh, David and Abraham as illustrations of righteousness. But he also explains just how, um, how they are righteous. You see, because when, when Paul is, is bringing this message, it's one that... Um, that might be met with, probably met with opposition because he's telling them that um, there is no salvation by works. And this is foundational to what the, um, the Jewish people at that time believed. The, that was the struggle that, that their mindset was that they were righteous simply because they were children of Abraham, that they were, um, they were the circumcised. They were, um, they were right with God in their own eyes. And it led, to, um, it led to unrighteousness in their own lives, thinking that they're right, thinking that they're good before God. And their mistreatment of others was directly resulted from their, their own hardened hearts, their own neglect of the Bible, neglect of what God's word actually said. They, they took their traditions and they made them into um, a religion. So you have God's word and you have tradition and you'll see that, that oftentimes when we put our traditions, and everybody has traditions, you know, we have things that we're comfortable with. So tradition by itself is not, not bad. But when we replace the word of God, what God says about himself, what God says with our traditions, that's where we can um, absolutely be led astray. So Paul is talking about no salvation in, through works in chapter 8. He uses Abraham as an example. Because he doesn't go for the small, he goes for the, the top. You know, Abraham is the, the Jew, the original, right? God, God brought the, the Jewish nation out of Abraham. God used Abraham in, in that way. So to, to say that Abraham is righteous, there, no Jew would disagree. But again, was it through his work? And so Paul, Paul makes it clear in 1 through 8 that, that it isn't uh, the... the the works that Abraham did. It's in God imputing that righteousness in, in him. So in verse 3, I'm sorry, let's go back to um, Genesis 15. And, um, well, I'm sorry. In, uh, in verse 8, Paul is quoting in Romans, 8, uh, Romans 4, verse 3, Paul is quoting Genesis. So he says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited, credited to him as righteousness. So when Paul is addressing these errors, these mistakes that the Jewish nation had about, about salvation and how they were saved, again, he takes Abraham, uh, an example where they wouldn't argue his righteousness, but he is arguing how, um, how was he justified? How was he made right? How was he righteous? And, and he quotes the Bible then, that Abraham believed and it was credited to him as righteousness, pointing to the fact that, that there wasn't a work in him that, that made him righteous before God. Well, we have a responsibility to, um, to respond, but our responsibility doesn't um, supersede God's, God's work in salvation, God's drawing, his Holy Spirit um, convicting his work in salvation. So if the Father doesn't draw and the Spirit doesn't, doesn't um, work in the person's heart, it's not a work for, for someone to respond 
to the call of God. It's not a work for someone to, um, to feel that, that God working in their lives and responding to that. So I would not say that, that our response is a work. Right. Yeah. Right. The the faith that that Abraham expressed was a gift of God, the grace of God. Um, I like what the sixteen eighty nine says about specifically about about faith. Uh, sixteen eighty nine uh, Baptist Confession um, fourteen one. The grace of faith enables the elect to believe so that their souls are saved. It is the work of the Spirit of Christ in their hearts. Faith is ordinarily produced by the ministry of the Word, by the same ministry, and by the administration of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Prayer and other means appointed by God, faith is increased and strengthened. Again, it's, it's a gift. Faith is a gift. And our, our reaction, our response is, is, is um, God-driven, God-given. Yes, brother. Right. Yes, sir. Right. In our own in our own uh, understanding, sometimes we can think that well, I'm doing this and not understanding that God is drawing us. And so, like you said, if we get it backwards, where we we claim that because because I've decided, you know, I'm going to clean my act up, and then. We uh, neglect or don't understand that it's God drawing us and that there's the Holy Spirit working in us, changing that heart of stone that um, can lead someone to say, well, you know, I, I, I think I did this. Brother, you had a... Right. Disregard. Yeah, exactly. Apart from the work of the Holy Spirit, our our nature is against an anti God, and like you said, it could be just a, a neglect, which is a sin in itself, or just a, a hatred, which you see sometimes outpouring. Just you know, um, anti um, anti God attitude, atheist attitude. Um, but like you said, apart from the Holy Spirit working, uh, there's there's no hope. Right. Right. It, it's a. It's a. Yes, sir. It's a man-centered uh, view instead of a God, God-centered view of of how that that works. Back there. <laughs> 
Well, when you say we don't have to do anything, there is a response. Right. Right. Yes, sir? Absolutely. That, that's a correct statement. Like you said, um, God, it's God, it's God, it's God. You know, when you say that God gives us everything, he, is, he, he, he draws us to him. And the Holy Spirit works in our heart. So our response is exactly that, a response to what God's doing in our life. And so when we, when we look at it biblically and we understand it, then that should lead to you know, a few things. Humility, understanding that, well, you know what? I didn't just figure this out on my own. It should lead to absolutely repentance and uh, understanding of, of God's holiness that, you know what? I, I never would have uh, chased after God if, I was, if he wasn't working in my life. You know, I might have wanted to stay out of trouble, but I wouldn't want to serve God. I wouldn't love God without him drawing and working. And, and it just leads to a, a, a greater uh, appreciation of God and his work in our lives. Exactly. Sure. To Absolutely. Uh, right. 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 Abraham certainly had a responsibility to, to obey what God commanded him. Sure. So, like you said, um, being saved, you're not saved by works, but you're not, sa you're not saved, or you are saved for works. Um, Ephesians 2.10, um, for by grace you have been saved. No, no, I'm sorry, yeah, you as workmanship. Yeah, yeah. So created for, for good works, that's the purpose. And uh, not working for salvation, but um, working because you're saved. And again, and, and any, any, um, any Christ-centered service, any um, God, um, God work that we do, it is in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we, we don't get the glory. Again, if we, when we recognize it, and that's, that's, a, that's another thing, when we understand that it's, that it's God's Holy Spirit, not only just uh, driving us to, to, um, to do these things, but empowering us to, to love someone that maybe we wouldn't be, be able to love someone. But in the power of God, in the power of His Holy Spirit, you know we, we are uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what. So, yeah. Sure. 
Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. And I, I, I totally agree with that. Right. Exactly. A, a good intention, but if a wrong theology will, will take you astray. And then you wind up with this, with this other God that's up there waiting and hoping on you and can't do anything about it other than the God of the Bible who says that I will, I will save you. I will maintain you. And, that, and that's our assurance. And we, we trust in the, the God who saves and not in our ability or inability to hang on to, to salvation. <laughs> no, it's, it's simple. It's like trying to explain it all. It's just that God chose me and I chose him. Right? That's a. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, all right. So where were we? <laughs> we went from there to rap. All right. No, but honestly, yeah, there is a, uh, a care that we have to take when we're looking at the Word of God. And when, sometimes when things look um, like we don't understand it, we, just, we really need to study and we need to, to test what we hear. Because like we said, you know, traditions start off with good intentions, but it could lead us astray. It will lead us astray if it's other than what the Word of God says. And so we, it'll wind up with a different version of what God says about himself. The fact that he is uh, sovereign. The, the fact that he is more than able to, to, to keep what he wants. And, and the fact that it is grace. That it isn't us. That it isn't our, our works. Our, uh, our, and as we're talking, supposed to talk about today, our rituals. You know, the, um, the fact that Again, back, back in, uh, in Salvation by Works, you know, he uses David as an example. And, and the very words of David are what we're going to look at today in, uh, in, Rome, I'm sorry, in, uh, in, Rio, in Romans uh, 4. I'm sorry, we're going to look at Romans 3 because that's where this, this study starts. When, uh, um, when Paul is, is talking about the, um, the blessing or using David as, a, as an example of righteousness. <clears throat> He's quoting David when he says, um, find that. Went too far. Okay. I'm looking for it. Uh, four. Okay, David. Um, David speaks of the righteous, the blessing. Okay, so um, in yes, yeah, six through eight. Yes, just as David also speaks of the blessings of the one whom God counts righteous apart from works. So. When um, in the in the previous chapter or previous lesson, where J David is is talking about the the fact that that the the lawless is is blessed and that blessing and when Paul's talking about um, who's who's this, who's this blessing for, he's talking about the blessing that is God's covering of that sin of the of the lawless and Paul David as the example he had a he had a huge um, debt. David understood this blessing that, that he's talking about when he talks about the blessing that is uh, being credited as righteous. You know, David sinned greatly, and that's kind of a, a weird statement because any sin is a great sin. But David, you know, caused, um, caused this man to die directly. You know, he took the man's wife um, and then caused this man to die. David understood forgiveness. David understood the, 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 um, the blessing that is God's forgiveness. <clears throat> 
this, this imputed righteousness, this, this ability for God to not just wink and, and, and uh, let him slide, but to, to cover that. And um, let me read that again. Um, in 6, yes. Just as David speaks... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, just as David speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. So he's talking about these blessings. This man who sinned, David understood that completely in his, in his life. And this, this righteousness that, that this, man, this man received isn't um, because this man was good. It, it talks about his lawlessness. This, this, um, it's a picture of us. You know, we don't deserve the righteousness. We don't deserve the, the covering that, that, Jesus, that Jesus provides for us and that God has done. Again, Paul is using these examples. Abraham, someone truly righteous. David, the, their king, the, this, the, um, their, the man after God's own heart. He's using these examples, and they aren't perfect in and of themselves. They aren't righteous in themselves, in, in their works and what they've done. It's, again, using the Old Testament. Paul is using the Old Testament to make his case, to point to the fact that he's not, he's not anti-Scripture. Um, uh, anti he's using Scripture to, to make his case that God is um, providing this righteousness apart from works, not because of their works. So... When Paul is, is using this, um, or, or taking, to, taking them to task for their attitudes, for their, their wrong uh, ideas, these stem from their, their wanting to be um, righteous by their works, by the way that they live, by the fact that, and we'll see this, by the fact that they were circumcised. You know, they, were, they called themselves the circumcision. They, they, were, um, they were sure of themselves that because they were circumcised, because they were descendants, descendants of Abraham, that they were right with God. And they saw this, this um, righteousness through their works. They saw the righteousness through this ritual, through this um, circumcision. So in, um, in verse 9, where we start, to start, start the study off, is this blessing then only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? For we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised, so that righteousness would, make, would be counted to them as well and to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised but also walk in the footsteps of faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. So uh, Paul is using this, this statement to say that, okay, the previous, last week, talked about works not saving us. And today he's talking about the ritual that's not, gonna, that's not providing salvation. This ritual of uh, circumcision, the, the flesh, their own, again, their own work, their own um, effort, or the efforts of their parents who, who um, provided that for them. Who, they're, they're using this sign as a, as a guarantee, as, um, as the putting their faith in that. And again, Paul's discounting it and saying, and he calls them out by it. By this, their example, he calls them out by it. So he says that, um, is this blessing for the circumcised or uncircumcised? So he's, he's asking them, you know, if, if it's all about circumcision, if, you know, you are, you are saved by your circumcision, well, is it just for, just for you? Or, or, and he's preaching to the Gentiles. The church he's talking to right now has Jewish Christians and Gentiles. It's a mix. So when he brings this, this question to them, to the Jews, it's like, well, he's already, he's already said that the, the gospel is for the Greek and the, and the Jew. So who's this for? When you, when you value this circumcision, he's asking them, uh, what is this blessing for? Or who's it for? And then he's, he answers. He says, for we say. So he asks the question in 9. Is this blessing then only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? And, he says, and then he says, 
He answers the question, for we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. And then he talks about how it was counted to him. And when he says we, again, he's not disagreeing with the scripture. You know, that's the word of God says it, and he's agreeing with it. And he says, we say that, that, um, that Abraham, faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. Again, making the case that he's not saying contrary to the word of God, he's using the scriptures to enforce his, uh, or to reinforce his, his um, statement. Right, exactly. Right. Right. That's exactly the point that he's making. Right. Right. And that's what he's saying. He says, so, so if you value circumcision as your uh, means of salvation, then when you're when we're looking at Abraham and his righteousness, well, was it before or after? And when we look at uh, Genesis um, fifteen six, and you'll you'll look at the do a little math, and that's what he's basically calling him out. And he's using the word and, and asking him. In Genesis fifteen six um, says, and he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Then you go a little further in. Uh, 16.6, but Abram said, to, I'm sorry, yeah, 16.16, 16, I'm sorry. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar, Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. So they have a son, you know, Abram, Abram is circumcised, that's the, the seal of the covenant, and so... Um, I'm sorry, Abraham is counted righteous. I misspoke. And then um, Abraham's 86, year old, 86 years old when Hagar gives him the son. In 1723, you'll see that then Abram took Ishmael, his son, and all those born in his house or bought with his money, every male among them among Abram's house, and he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day as God had said to him. Abram was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. So that, he's, he's calling him out. He goes, so you're saying that, that this, this seal, that this, uh, this sign is, is salvation. That, that's your guarantee. He said, well, if that's the case, God counted him righteous. Years later, he, he gets circumcised. So in their tradition, they, they believed that um, somehow Abram was, Abraham was able to Maintain all the law, just intuitively. Just and again, you, you get to that. You get to these, um, I guess, um, traditions that have to fill in the gaps when, when the Bible tells us that. Well, it was years later, you know, that that he was circumcised. Right. As right. As 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 doctrines or as as theology changes, you know, as people's ideas of what the Bible says changes, you'll see that exactly that right. You'll have to change what the Word of God says, or ignore it, or read it backwards, or or misinterpret it to make it say what what they're trying to say today. When when they're um, Coming up with new ideas. Yes, sir? Or ignore them? Right. Right. If someone has a... Right. So if a, a pastor wants to um, make a case for uh, some, some error that he wants to believe, um, uh, homosexuality, and say that, well, the, he, has to, he has to go against what the Word of God says or ignore it or, or change it, and that's why we have to have the Bible as our ultimate authority. And that's why we have to submit to the, the tough things that are in there. When, when God calls sin, sin, 
uh, we have to submit to it. We have to agree with it. And that's not I'm calling anybody to hate anybody, but absolutely not to ignore sin or not to ignore what God says about him, uh, himself and his uh, standards. Absolutely. And that's, that's, a, that's a great point, that the fact that Paul isn't dreaming up a new, um, new idea. There is a new covenant. There is a, 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 a sacrifice that's been made that's been done once and for all. But he's, again, pointing back to Scripture, pointing back to the, the Old Testament and saying, this is, this is what God says about himself. This is what God says about how he has um, made someone righteous, how someone is, is righteous before God. And again, it's the work of God, the work, um, certainly uh, Abraham had a, a response, but you see God working and you see David's response, and David's appreciation for, for God's mercy and grace in his life. I've actually heard someone say that. Oh, okay. And it's kind of, right, right. So living, living a sinless life, you know, and then like you said, if they remove themselves from any form of sin, then they're not obeying what God says about being that salt, being that light in a dark world. We're, we're in the darkness for a reason. We're, in, we're to be that salt in, in the, we're supposed to bring that, that light of, of God to where, um, uh, you know, in obedience. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Right. Right. And, and, and that's important to, to realize that when someone has one verse and if their whole theology is on one verse and not the full counsel of, of the word of God, then there's a problem with it right there. That scripture doesn't con, uh, contradict itself. Um, Paul is, again, pointing to what God said in Genesis. And, um, you know, we have to be careful that we don't um, neglect the whole word of God. And if we need to struggle with what God's word says, and we, we need to do that and, and submit to what his word says, uh, despite um, what is um, how's Paul's writing, the hard things that Paul writes, so the difficult things. That warning that that sin is right there at the door. Right. And and Paul's response to the the idea that that we could we would um, make grace better by sinning more, and he says that in the previous chapters, may that never be. That um, no, you know we're called to, to righteousness, not 
for our salvation, but because we have been saved and we have um, a drip. No, you're not. Yes, brother? You had a, you're going to say something? Okay. So, uh, moving on to verse 11. It says, He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had, that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So it was a sign, it was a seal, and um, it's, it's, um, it's like going on vacation. So you're going to Garner Park, and you see a sign that says Garner State Park, 20 miles, and you, the sign says Garner State Park. You camp right there, and you complain about the, the terrible camp, camping conditions. You're not at the park. So if you take the sign of, that is uh, circumcision and you claim that as your salvation, you're not there. You know, you've, you've missed what God has, has given. He's given it to him, as, as Paul says, as a sign and a seal of the righteousness. This was the, a seal of the, the, the reminder of the covenant that he made with Abraham and the covenant that he made with his people. They take that and they claim that as their salvation. They're neglecting God. They're neglecting what he says about himself. The fact that he is uh, a jealous God. He's not going to share his glory with anyone or anything. So when we help God or when we look at something else, some other ritual in our lives, something else that, that uh, we see as our salvation, other than what God says about his, his salvation, his, his um, work in our lives, his work in, in salvation, in justification, then we, we could be guilty of that of taking what God's given us as a sign, as a seal, and um, misusing, misinterpreting, and mis, uh, misunderstanding, and causing others to misunderstand. You know, we talked about that earlier, where, you know, we had, I had certain beliefs, and, um, and people in, 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 um, in good intentions, you know, shared ideas with me. But again, what does the Word of God say? And that, that's got to be our final authority, is what does the Word of God say, and um, is it consistent with the, the full counsel of God, the full Word of God? That, that's what we have to be mindful of and careful with in, in, um, in everything that we hear. Today you hear so many um, churches, pastors, uh, taking up uh, different ideas that are contrary to the Word of God. Again, the, this, this idea that this sign, it, it had a purpose. You know, the, the purpose, and it says it right here in 11, the purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being, without being circumcised, so the righteousness would be counted to them as well. So this idea that, that the Jews were themselves and everybody else was Gentile, and, and Paul's saying, wait a minute, this was so that this is for unity. You know, that, that sign absolutely set you apart, but the purpose was for unity. And, and um, he says, and to make him the father of the circumcised, who are not merely circumcised, but also walk in the footsteps of faith. So there is no ritual that gets you into the, the family of God. It is this, this um, faith. And it says, the, the footsteps of faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Our father Abraham. So he's talking to the Jews. He's talking to the Gentiles in that church and the, the Jewish Christians in that church. So he's, he's saying that, yeah, at, at one point there was just the Jews, and that was their sign, that was the, the symbol of them. But it was for a purpose. And this unity, this, this fact that, it, again, it's not contrary to the word of God. There is no Greek, there is no Jew, there is no male, there is no female, in the sense that we are all brothers and sisters of Christ. We are all in the family. We are all of Abraham. You know, that, that's our lineage when we are grafted into, the, into that. So um, that, that's, that's a more accurate understanding of of, um, of our relationship with, with Abraham. You know, we are grafted into that, into that family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely right. The, the Bible, uh, the, the, the scripture, scriptures tell us that the, the, Bible, the Holy Spirit is that seal. And so we have a, a new covenant and there's a new seal. So there is, no, um, there is no salvation in ritual. And like, um, like whenever the subject of um, idolatry comes up and you think in your head, well, I'm not, I don't have a little uh, idol that I'm, that I'm praying to or worshiping. 
you know, we got to be careful what idolatry, you know, looks like today. The same thing with uh, these rituals, whatever we put our faith in, you know, what, what could be a ritual, um, saying a prayer, doing, doing something that we say, that, that, that's our salvation right there, that we point to that as our salvation uh, and, and ignore what God says about um, his role in salvation, his sovereignty in salvation. And um, it could lead, as Pastor said earlier, lead to the temptation, well, I just got to get them to, to do this. I just got to get them saved. Like salvation is, is our responsibility. Our responsibility is to obey God in, in what he says, preaching the word, saying, sharing the word, and it is the gospel that is the power unto salvation. That's our responsibility. Um, we don't know who, who the elect are, but God tells us, Jesus tells us to go, and uh, so we have an obligation to obey. Um, and we don't have the, the power to save, and we don't have the, um, the choice to who, who is saved. You know, when we think about who deserves salvation, the, the, Paul made it clear early on that no one is, himself included. He says that he's the chief sinner. So um, it, it's just important for us to, to realize what God says about justification and that it, it should absolutely humble us And when we recognize that um, we don't deserve it and that we, don't, we can't work for it and so we can't maintain it. It is, it is, it is grace. It's, it's our responsibility to, to be careful when we share that, that we share it accurately, that we, and that we do share it. That there is a, there is a, a hope, uh, and we are to, to share that hope that is within us. Does anybody have anything else? And it's kind of crazy with this uh, study. You see God's, um, God's accounting. You know, it's, it's not just an, an error. You see him crediting a count, and it says counted to Abraham, counted to him. You know, it, it's, um, it's, not, it's not like a clerical error, but there's absolutely, there's an accounting, a giving to him where um, there, there's no deserving. Imagine waking up and your bank account has, you know, ginormous amount inside there. You know, there, there's, multiply that when you talk about, you know, our salvation. Not deserving it, just waking just waking up, but just realizing what God has done for us. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. It is grace. Yeah, and that's the point Paul makes. He says, you know, for for the person that earns it, you know, but for the person who's gifted, uh, there's a exactly that's grace, right? Yeah, right. Again, it just drives us to realization and, and just appreciation of God's God's mercy and um, His holiness. You know, he 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 um, he's just more than able to to um, pay that price too because the, the sacrifice of Jesus, that perfect sacrifice, he, there, there is a work, but it's, it's the work of Christ. You know, his, his ability to live uh, a perfect life, to be that sacrifice and to, to suffer and die and, and to bear those, those sins for once, all sins. So um, that's our assurance, not in our ability to hang on, not in our ability to, to be good, we are, we're called to, to hang on, or to fight the fight, to, to run the race, to, uh, to be, um, to live a godly life. We're called to that. But that is not for our salvation. It is because of our salvation. It is because of the work of God. It's because of the Holy Spirit that we're even wanting to or able to. And um, it's just important for us to, to understand that and to, 
to recognize when we see error and, and to um, just be wary of it, where it could lead us. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Thank you all. Oh, go ahead. Absolutely. And thank God for those people who, who do set an example for us here and who, who are able to, to teach and to, to share uh, and encourage and rebuke. You know, I've, I've, I've thankfully, or semi-thankfully, you know, had a pastor tell me, you know, uh, call out sin and, and to direct and, and thank God for, for uh, uh, honesty and thank God for strength and God, thank God for direction. It's, it's important. And, and we need to look for that when we're studying. We need to see that. That um, that calling out that 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 sin for what it is, and um, and our responsibility for it. Absolutely right. Right. Sure. Right, right. Uh, on earth, there is nobody that, that is sinless. And that's that's the, and that's our um, that's our challenge. You know, on this side of glory. You know, when we when we reach glory, and that at that time there'll be no sin, there'll be no temptation, and that's that's our hope. That's what we're hoping for. Right. 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 In comparison to Christ's whole, God's holiness, right. Perfection. Understanding that no matter how, how, how good we are, that yeah, we still we're all sinners struggling, and we're all in need of a, of a savior. <laughs>
Anything else? <laughs> well, thank you all. Thank you very much.